Hi, I'm the Grow Boss, and this is Cannabis Hotline. This is a show where we can talk about anything about cannabis that you have questions about. For instance, you want to start growing, or you're growing and have questions. I wrote the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, so we can talk about growing. And if you have questions about the medical side of cannabis, I'm a paramedic nurse. I've been doing this for a long time, and I am happy to help you with that, too. And if you want to talk legal questions, well, I may not be able to help you with that as much, but I'm sure we can find an answer. So if you've got questions, I've got answers. This is Cannabis Hotline, and I'm the Grow Boss. Okay, this next caller is a medical patient. And medical patient calls usually go about the same way, where they're considering growing for their medical needs, and then when they stop and think about it, they should just be purchasing their own from a dispensary or facility somewhere if they can, if it's legal. Depending on how sick they are, sometimes it's worth traveling. But with the medical patients, I always try to get you guys to understand that it's medical first, and then if you wanna grow your cannabis, that's fine. But the important thing to consider always is that it's medical first, and that you need to take care of yourself as a person because you only get so long on the planet, and you should be able to enjoy it for as long as you can with the best health that you can. And so I really, really try to encourage you, while not to break the law, to treat yourself. Now, cannabis is, you know, a fringe medicine. It's a medicine on the edge. And there's been no research because it's been illegal all this time because the tobacco and alcohol lobbying, you know, 100 years ago came up with cannabis is bad and alcohol and tobacco is good. And even though it clearly has demonstrated that the opposite is true. It still takes a long time for the legal process to work through. But it's always better than the alternatives. I always try to keep you off the opiates and, and the alcohol. I really always try to encourage you guys to go for that medical cannabis first, to work as hard as you can to get off the opiates. And it's just one of those things where the big pharmaceutical companies, again, push this on you and they say, marijuana, that cannabis is bad, and yet they've got alcohol, tobacco, and opiates running rampant. So it's just something to consider. Let's listen to this call that I had with this guy. He's on an island somewhere where heat's not a problem. That must be nice. Okay, I'm the Grow Boss. This is Cannabis Hotline, and let's take this 40-minute call. All right, Don, so what are you calling me for today? I am calling you for, um, I started, I bought all my gear, um, like I said, before I got uh, a hold of all your videos and learned all your stuff from your book. Um, I was going to use, um, I have a um, sodium, a 600 watt sodium um, light, and now that I'm going to do this, I believe, for a long time, um, I'm thinking about my electrical bill, so I'm going to start switching. I haven't got my veg light, so the thing is, I want to get set up to eventually replace my um, my halide for maybe a T5 or an LED. And I wanted your advice on maybe the direction I should go for saving money and electricity. So those are basically the reasons why I called you. Okay. So when you have questions about electricity and yield and LED, I always tell you guys this, and that is um, yield based on light. And light's yeah. based on electricity. So the yeah. less electricity you use, the less yield you're going to get. Now, the difference between the lights, do you understand the difference between like an LED and an HID, like the inherent difference between them? Yes. I, I mean, the, the best way to go is the sodium. I mean, you get more power and it grows your plant fuller and better, right? So if I cut out the other stuff, uh, I'm just not going to get 100% of my plant's growth. Okay, exactly. yes, sort of. Here's the difference. An HID bulb, MH or HPS, doesn't matter. An mm -hmm. HID bulb uses electricity. So let's say 1,000 watts uses 1,000 watts worth of electricity. So right there it gets 1,000 watts hot. Mm -hmm. Then from there it heats up a gas that then releases the light. So not only do you get 1,000 watts worth of heat, you get 1,000 watts worth of the gas being heated up too. Now, a T5 
if you have a 1,000-watt T5, it'll still get a 1,000 watts of electricity hot. But the T5s don't get as hot to make the light. They don't heat a gas. Mm. Now, LEDs, they, if you have a 1,000-watt LED, it will consume a 1,000 watts worth of electricity, whatever it promises to yield. I know they say the 600 is like 1,000, but what we're talking about is power draw at the wall here. So if you have a 1,000-watt LED, it will still get 1,000 watts hot, but it does not heat a gas to make the light. Mm -hmm. So they run considerably cooler. So if you look at the venting videos that I put up, I ran yep. some thermal tests on these. And yep. what you noticed was is a 1,000 watt – I'm going to round everything up here. If you have a – round everything off to $100. If you have a $100 1,000-watt light, it's yep. going to get very hot, but it produces more light than anything else. Yep. Now, if you have a 1,000-watt T5, that will probably cost you $400. But – it gets 80% of the amount of light, so almost all the light, but it does it for 80% less heat. Now, if you have a 1,000-watt LED that truly draws a 1,000 watts, well, that will produce about 80% of the light, too, just like a T5. And it will do it for 85% less heat. So there's like 5% less heat than a T5. The problem is, it's $1,500. Yes. So if you go from a 1,000 watt at $100 to a T5 1,000 watt at $400 to a LED 1,000 watt at $1,500, the reality is the LED does not produce that less heat than a T5. Both a T5 and an LED produce enormous amounts less heat. I guess you can't say it that. They create so much less heat that they're worth it. But then, look, if, if a T5 is four times the amount and an LED is 15 times the amount, you've got to ask yourself, if you're pulling the same electricity from the wall, do you really need to go from $400, say like a Nickel City T5, to a $1,500 kind? And if the answer is yes, buy a kind because they are fantastic. Yeah. But that's not the only problem, though. The second problem is they do a little bit of tricky math here. So let's say you get a 1,000-watt LED. In your case, let's move to your case. A 600-watt LED. Um, these are the ones, like, they say, like a 400-watt LED that grows like a 600-watt. You know what I mean? They always say, yes, yep, more. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you're going to get a 600-watt yield, that is a 4x4 four four space, 2 feet deep. You will get 3 pounds wet, 1 pound dry from a 600-watt HID. Now, a 600-watt HID goes in like one of those two-by-two two hoods. A two-by-two two hood, four or five feet in your tent over your crop, well, now you've got 600 watts over a four-by-four four space, two feet deep. Yeah. Now, take your little LED, because the kind 600 is like a, it's like a 12-by-20 panel. So, how are you going to get a 12 by 20 panel to light up a 4 by 4 space two feet deep? One of two things. You either have to put it 10 feet away, which means you'd have to cut a hole in the tent, or yeah. you'd have to put it on a light mover. Yeah. Now, a light rail light mover is 7 watts. So technically, if you had a 400-watt LED, you'd be saving 200 watts from a 600-watt light <laughs> plus the heat, and you'd have to buy a $200 light mover. For it, which okay. is only seven watts, so it doesn't count. But when you read through the research for all of these manufacturers, the LEDs and the, even the HIDs, they're telling you to put the light two feet over the plant or closer. Okay. My question is, is if it takes a four by four space, two feet deep, to grow three pounds wet or one pound dry, how mm -hmm. the fuck are you going to put a light one foot over it? I don't feet? understand that either. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so okay. my question is, you can't grow three-foot buds inside a tent. The light's too close. The tent's too short. If you want three-foot arms, you were really talking about growing outdoors. Yeah. So there's some limitations. So if three pounds wet is a four-by-four, two feet deep, you have to grow a four-by-four, four, two feet deep to get that weight, no matter what. 
I don't care what the light promises you. You have to. You can't grow in any smaller space. You see what I'm getting at? Yeah, I got you. I got that from your first. Yeah, I. I, I yeah, I understand. I understand it when you, I watched your video before. You you make it perfectly clear. Yeah, I I see your point. Uh, I guess okay. I was just me and my wife were just going. Well, fuck, man. You know, you can save money. But I guess the bottom line is, you're not. Well, you're be running, yes and no. You get left healed. You get left healed, and I, right. I was favoring the T5, and I knew that you know obviously you're not going to be the same. Uh, you know, it's not going to be as fat and as strong and as as better as it would. You no, know. no, no, no. I defy you to to if I put three buds in front of you. I right. defy you to be I, able to I, tell me. I saw that one too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so right. how about we how about we take this from a different perspective, and instead of we do the eighteen to forty nine year old dumb, stupid, aggressive male, how about we take this backward and we ask you and your wife, are you yeah. just smokers or are you going to eat it? We're going to eat it. Okay. <clears throat> are you heavy consumers or light consumers? We're just starting out. So okay. Okay. I concur that, that that would define you as light consumers. If you were going to be a light consumer, I would suggest that a pound every 60 days would be more than sufficient for That's you. That's what we agree to. We agree that. Okay. Too. If a pound every 60 days is our goal, then that's a four hundred, that's a four foot 12 bulb T5 with a four foot eight bulb T5 bed. Yeah, 600 that's watts. It. Yeah, 600 watt flower, 400 watt bed. You're in the Nickel City T5 range and you're off the HID light. Now, yeah. that said, if a 600 watt HID is about 200 bucks and a 400 watt HID is is about two hundred bucks or so. You're at four hundred dollars worth of light for the most heat possible. Right. Now, if you go ahead and get your T fives, you're probably running into the six hundred dollar range. However, yeah, yeah, the heat. That's will be. I, guess I should have said that. I should have said heat instead of electricity. Um, because that's what that's what it all boils down to. This this thing is is extremely hot, and it's winter time here. But come summertime. I'm going to have some problems. I'd have to do an air conditioning. There's more. So, yeah, I guess it was LED versus T5. And I've watched all your videos, and I've done a lot of research. And the, the T5 seemed the way to go. Uh, it's definitely for the bang for your buck. I mean, Oh, for the home grower looking to just produce enough for themselves, the T5 is almost always the winner. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And if oh, you yeah. did the same math with a flower and veg for LED, you would be at what a 600 watt flower and a 400. And I'm not talking that Mars overseas. Yeah, you're talking about black shit. dogs. Black I'm talking dogs. real LEDs, right? Black dogs, right? California light, California light, and then right. the platinum yeah. LEDs, kind of LEDs. But then these are the ones that have the real fisheye lens. Like when you look at my videos and you see those smoke ones with kind LEDs in them. Dude, you can see how wide the dispersal pattern is from yeah. those fisheye lenses. Totally worth it. And, and I told my wife, okay, check it out. I am 47, and when I'm 60, I'm going to be driving a Porsche. And that's when I will have, you know, some badass LEDs because this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, money, at that point, I just want to drive a Porsche. So I will be into there, but right now... I'm just starting out and learning, so I'm even going to go the T5 route, and that makes more sense. But uh, just like any hobby, you, you know, you want the better stuff eventually. So, I mean, LEDs, maybe I'll be doing that when I win the lottery. <laughs> but, but, for now, I, but for now, the T5s, I think, will work, you know. So, okay, so then let me ask you this. Do you know how to grow? I Only by perfecting it by every time I re reread your book. So, okay. No. <clears throat> I appreciate you being so honest with me. So let me let me make this suggestion to you. Yep. If you do a 400 watt veg T5 four foot eight bulb with a 600 watt four foot twelve bulb flower, you're yep. going to be in a two by four by five foot tall tent, and then the flower will probably be in like a three by five or a four by four tent, like a Sun Hut 80 or like a Gorilla 4x4 tent or something along those lines. Well, I already have all that. 
Oh, okay. So what tank I, do you have? I have, I have my I have my 600 watt um, sodium and my five by five tent. I've got five gallon smart pots. I've got um, a six inch exhaust fan with a a, um, a, um, a filter on it. I've got a four inch pushing um, air into it with a filter on it. I've got a, a, a T5 over my starter plants right now, 154 watt bowl. And so my next purchase, I have to get a bed light. So I was going to get a um, a four bulb, 200 watt T5 to keep my mother's so. alive. I don't think okay. so. Okay. Okay. What should so. I get for my? I think you're going to get, get at least 300 foot, watts, right? I think you're going to get a four foot eight bulb because okay, yeah. I think you're going to replace your 600 watt light with a T5 eventually. I am. Yes, I am. Right. So that's what I was talking about. That's what I wanted. Okay. So in this case, let me. I heard something else in there. You had suggested that you had. You had said that you had two fans. I heard. <laughs> I told you I bought all this before. Wow. <laughs> I, uh, I, I heard that. I was just waiting until you finished. So tell me more about your venting. Okay. So and and the only way that this is happening in this five by five right now is because I'm keeping it cool by. Um, I have the six inch um, exhaust pushing uh, um, pushing through my cool tube, and um, it's hooked up to a filter on top of my tent here. It's got one elbow and goes straight out my tent. On the bottom, I have a four inch hooked up to a filter, and it's blowing at a real low pace. So I turned them all on before, and the tent would suck in, so I got it adjusted right. And during the winter time right now, it's okay. I got the tent at a, approximately. I can keep it at those two level is pretty about 73 in there um so that's what i'm doing i'm bringing fresh air in i'm pulling it out so like you said in your videos it doesn't cool it but it is keeping it the, the heat out of there enough to where um it seems to be balancing itself out right now so, okay so let me that. offer you let me offer you a couple suggestions on that yes. the four inch the four inch you said has a filter on it and the six yes. inch has a filter correct yep okay but you're venting your cool tube out both sides of the tent, right? No, it's just coming into the one room that it's sitting in. in the no, 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 no. The, oh, the, no, the, the cool tube, both sides are connected outside the tent. No. no right so, now the so the cool the tube tent. is sucking air out of the tent. Yes. Is that what you're saying? The cool tube, only yes. one side is hooked up. The fan yes. filter is on the top. You're sucking air out of the cool tube. The other side of the cool tube is not hooked to anything, and it's sucking air out of the tent. Yeah, I'm blowing through the two tubes. Though. I've got the the um, the, the um, canister butted up, and I, I've come, I'm I'm sucking through the filter and blowing through the cool tube out of the tent. Okay, you have two fans, correct? A six and a four inch. Yep. Okay, the six inch fan is blowing through is uh, what I'm getting at the six inch fan is venting the tent. It's air yes, it is. out of yep. the tent. Okay. Yep. The four inch fan. What's the four inch fan doing? It's feeding the tent. Um fresh You're blowing air. air into the tent? Yeah. Okay. So the reality is fans don't cool anything. Yes. I got that. From they only room. remove heat. Mm -hmm. And if the glass is the second hottest thing in your garden. Yep. I you might as well get rid of the cool tube. Uh, so you could just buy a wing. Now, I know you're changing to a T5. So yes, I the, re the reason that I'm going to go through this with you is because you're going to have to vent the tents, regardless of what length. If, 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 does a four-inch fan have a filter on it, too? Yep, yeah. Okay, so you really only need one filter if you're sucking the air out of the tent. Yeah, I thought, you know, since it's, it's the filtering in the room, is this going to keep the smells even better? <laughs> that would okay. be... Well, we'll have to find out when you start flowering if it filters the smell even better. Yeah, right, okay. However, okay. however what, what I would like to prepare you for is that you're going to end up, you have this five-by-five five tent, Yes. You literally, you could buy a 4x4 four four tent to put next to it. You could buy a 2x4 tent. Don't really care for the 4 foot 8 bulb. If you'd like them to be similar, listen, you could buy two 5x5s. Five They're cheap enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to put them next to each other, and then yeah. you're going to get the one 4-inch fan, and you're going to vent both tents into the filter. You don't need to blow air into the tents. All you have to do is leave the little port at the bottom open. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it cannot suck any air out unless more air gets in. 
Because if you suck air out, I mean, think about a paper bag. Once you suck all the air out, uh, unless you're going to turn the paper bag inside out into your lungs, there isn't anywhere for it to go. Well, that's what I was doing. I turned the fan on and started sucking in the the sides of the tent until I started turning up my fan. Yeah, because you got too much fan. Listen, you've got a a six-inch fan. A six-inch fan does what? 250 CFM. Your five-by-five tent is 25 square feet times seven feet (laughs) tall, which is 175 cubic feet. If yeah. you've got a 250 CFM fan, you're entering, you're exhausting that entire tent every 45 seconds. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's nothing. I mean, listen, you could vent that tent with a two-inch fan, and it wouldn't get any cooler. And I show you that in my videos because yeah, yeah, fans yeah. don't cool anything, right? Yeah. So you think I should take that six-inch out and put my four-inch? Up there before, because my babies aren't even going to be ready for another two months to go into the tent. So um, I should take okay. my four inch, take my six inch out. I could just leave the six inch. It's, it, I turned it almost all the way off. Just there Listen, you on. don't have any plants in there, so it doesn't matter when you turn these on. What I'm suggesting is, is that we're heading toward a vision. Do you have hobbies? Do you have a hobby? What, what's one of yeah, your hobbies? This, this is my hobby. Yep. This you and build I build hobby? rockets. I build rocket stoves. <laughs> you, build, stoves. you build what? Um, stoves. There's, it's just a type of stove that you heat your house with. Um, okay. It's called so a rocket stove. Listen, you have rocket stoves. Have you had anybody ask you questions where you go, look, dude, you could do that, but it's just going to melt your house down? Yeah. Right. And so what I'm suggesting is that we do this the same way you talk to your customers when you're helping them make a choice. And that uh, is, Let's start with what you're trying to accomplish and work our way back. So you're trying to accomplish two ounces a week, which is a 600-watt Nickel City 12-bulb in veg, and you might get a – I mean in flour, in flour. And you might get a 16-bulb because, frankly, it's like 7500 bucks more, and you're already there. There's no point in not getting it. Uh, Yes, yes, T5 is definitely where I'm going Yep. Right, and so the difference between 12 and 16 bulbs doesn't matter that much. Doesn't matter. And no. so you might get an 8 or a 12 bulb uh, veg. What I'm <laughs> suggesting is when you have these two in your tents, these two lights, okay. you yeah. can take that 4-inch fan filter, branch them off into a Y, and yeah. you got to remember, T5s don't have flanges, so you can't hook up a duct. I've seen so, that, yep. Yeah, you're going to take the 4-inch, you're going to get some thermal flow ducting, you're going to get a 4x4x4Y, four by four by four and you're going to run some ducting into each tent. Now, okay. with with P5s, a 400 veg and a 600 flower, you could run the flower at night because it's more bulbs, and you mm-hmm. could run the veg during the day, and they'll only be overlapping for a couple of hours each. And frankly, your house AC should be able to deal with two T5s for a couple hours a day. Yeah. Well, I live on an island in the middle of the sound, so it ain't it ain't hot. Even in the summertime, it doesn't get hot. We don't get heat. <laughs> so I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. So there uh, you go. So, so, so I guess, now, I'm, so I'm <clears throat> stuck with this halide, though, and I, I want to at least drill one time. <laughs> it only costs okay. me 160 bucks, but... Uh, when you're done doing it that one time and you're ready to be successful, <laughs> and by successful, I mean keep the cost down, and and yeah. really, you, is it a digital mm. dimmable ballast? Yeah. So you could turn it down, and you can bench. And then when you're done vegging, you do, start yeah. flowering. And then when yeah. you're done flowering, mm, you're going to have to start over because unless you have two lights, you can't have a perpetual harvest because oh, I know. no bench. So I was going to pull the trigger today. I'm buying a T5. I kind of already – I was going to buy my veg light since I already had this okay. one. Okay. I figure, you know, I'll just use this for a couple times and then eventually replace it with a, a 12 or 16. But Listen, you're already on the path. You know I am. My I, four I know tent is like 100 some dollars. Get yourself a 4x4 four four or a 5x5 five five tent and get yourself a 12. It, it, the time to do it is now. If you're going to replace that 600 watt later, just buy the 16 bulb now. And mm-hmm. you'll Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and then I could just first, veg. I could just veg with it and grow with it until I can. You'll veg with it. You'll start flowering with the other one. 
You'll take your cuttings. You'll put it back under the 16 bulb. You'll only turn four bulbs on. Then when you're done flowering with a 600-watt light because you're going to do this, then get rid of the 600-watt light, put the 16 bulb in flower, and then go get yourself an 8 or a 12 bulb veg, and you'll already have the tent. Just go. All right. Yeah. So you'll buy like a 12, you'll buy a 16 bulb. And the only reason I say 16 bulb is this. A 16 bulb is 33% more than a 12 bulb. And yeah. once you've already bought the 12 bulb, it sucks to want a 16 bulb. Because now you <laughs> have know. to buy a whole new I, life. Right? I, I understand that theory very well, yes. Yeah. I, I mean, know. you already have six cylinders. What's two more? Yep. I hear you. I, yes, I always do that. Okay. Yeah, that's – okay. I got you. Bingo, bang. I, I, I don't know what I wanted to know. I, <laughs> I knew I messed up. I'm purchasing that highlight in the first place. But, uh, no, you're doing okay. I've got guys who call me with $1,500, $2,000 LEDs and veg and flowers. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, you're really not that far behind the, behind um, the curve. So yeah. I usually offer you guys that this is a half-hour point. I usually okay. offer you this. We can continue talking about whatever you'd like. Nope. You can have a little bit of time at this point to process. Yeah, right. I'll save it. I'll save it. <laughs> yeah, I'll just save my extra half an hour for another time. I do have other questions, but like you said, I'm going to process it, and I'm going to think some more, and i got some growing <laughs> to do. So if I run into trouble, you'll hear from me again. Okay, so you've got a half an hour of my time, and just remember, like anything else, there's a relationship between veg and flower. Because if you have a four-week veg, you might do six plants. But if you have a six-week veg, you might do four plants because the bigger the plants, the fewer you need. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you have four – sorry? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So if you have four plants that you veg for six weeks, you might go from a three to a seven or a ten gallon bucket. But if you have six plants on a shorter veg, you might go from a one to a five. And I know you said you had five gallon smart pot. I'm so, going from a one smart pot, one gallon to a five gallon, yeah. Okay, so there you go. So you know if you have a one gallon veg, you're going to have more plants and a shorter veg because you have a smaller bucket. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing your scrubs. I'm doing, uh, I'm gonna, I was going to raise them up. <laughs> Um, uh, nip them at the third, I guess it's like the third node, and then let it uh, sprawl out a little bit, nip it again, and I was going to try to, tr- you know, train it a little bit too, just to monkey around, but um, basically I want to see a green. So I would Okay, you do a sea of green. Wait, 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 wait. A sea of green is something very, very specific. Oh, no, no, I mean, I'm sorry, a sprog. Uh, uh, okay, a screen, screen of green. Of green. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got to so, watch the terms, right? Yeah, yeah, suddenly yeah, you yeah, go yeah, from yeah. six plants <laughs> to 40. Right. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to do – I'm doing a CBD right now. I was, I'm was taking them from seed, so i got to get them tested. And then I was going to clone them and keep the, keep the lady uh, at the low CBD – at the high CBD, low THC. So this is kind of like a and, – and they threw in these seeds. This is – I've got um, I've got a strain called um, Charlotte's Wet that I'm going to eventually do. This is kind of – they threw these seeds in, so I'm practicing with these guys. It's a, it's a Willie Nelson Charlotte's Web hybrid, so – these girls, these girls, sorry, don't jinx yourself. You're practicing yeah, on these, these girls, girls, right? Yeah, I'm hoping all of them are, you know, good. So, right. Um, yeah, so this okay, is like so let's, my, take, my a, wait, let's take a couple steps back. Let's take a couple okay, steps. Okay, yes. yes. What's the cost of testing? I'll, I'll tell you, it's more, it's, it's, it's more than just buying CBD strains. So yeah. let me ask you this. You, you sound like you're moving a little toward the medical side versus a recreational smoker. hundred so, percent. So tell me a little bit more, if you don't mind me asking, tell me a little bit more about why what you're doing this medically for. I mean if you don't mind oh, me asking first. Oh yeah, no, I don't mind it out. Um it started out about two months ago, my wife and I I have elements. Um I have some like skin conditions where uh, my face is real dry and I have I grew up in California, so I have sunspots that have to be frozen off. You know, I, for every oh, liver freckles, life, right. You bet. Yeah. And I've got, <laughs> I'm a construction worker, so I have um, some minor arthritis. i got tennis elbow. i got sore backs. You know, I've got arthritis in my back, blah, blah, blah. So my, my wife, she has a bunch of elements also. So we're just like, okay, let's just do this. Um, we decided, boom, we went, bought all the equipment. We're going to start growing for our elements. 
And what we want to do is do a mild case of, make a mild thing of Rick Simpson oil, which would be a CBD, so we can go to work and function and not be high. And then maybe do a nice indica, something that we can take when we get off work and um, maybe have so we can get a little bit of THC strain in our body at nighttime and help us sleep and stuff. So we don't get high. We don't really smoke it to get high. I'll, I do like to get high, but um, it's, it's basically for that, you know. So I can do a CBD and work all day and not have to worry about being high and uh, being safe and stuff. So that's – we just want to be healthy. We think cannabis – um, can, just a little bit of cannabis in you throughout the day just cures and it kind of regulates your body and, and hones it in and and just you just can't go wrong with it, you know. And um, my wife has tried so many different pharmaceutical things with all of her ailments from allergies to she's a kidney stone maker. She has real pro- a lot of problems with her uh, menstrual cycles. So we're hoping what well, we've read and, and studied uh, a lot of the cannabis really can control a lot of that and so we're hoping for that so we went in for the long haul and it's something that we want to do uh, for the rest of our lives hopefully okay so when you guys are medical i have a couple of suggestions independently for you would you mind if i offer them i would love to yes okay so one (laughs) go wherever it is and buy yourself some stuff go buy yourself some until you are done with this harvest. When I tell you guys that you guys are medical, I always suggest that you just go buy the stuff while you learn to grow it. There is no reason for you not to spend a couple of hundred bucks on some oils for your arthritis for lotion. There is, I mean, that aspirin cream, Ben Gay works for God's sakes for your skin. Go buy yourself the stuff. Go buy yourself the stuff professionally made. Spend a couple of hundred bucks and start to get the relief now. We are. Okay. Oh, you're already taking the stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I've already what? cured myself of things. I've already cured, like, wart that I've had. As soon as I started taking it, wart went away. Um, my sunspots are totally almost gone. Um, yeah, I'm, I have to because I haven't grown yet. So we're, I've been taking it every day. I've been taking a CBD that I bought. At, uh, it's legal here. So we went and bought a nice strand of um, CBD, and we bought some indica. And we infused it into the coconut oil that I've been using. Um, oh, congratulations on the release and being able to let go of the stigma of yeah. of what cigarettes and alcohol has claimed to be the bad thing. You know what I mean? Like someone, the one who screams the loudest about cheating is usually the cheater. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And cigarettes and alcohol are clearly the ones that were screaming about cheating. So, listen, those, I'm a paramedic person. When I hear about the opioids, the opiates that people take, dude, it turns my stomach. So I'm super pleased that you guys can allow yeah. yourself to go and do that. I really am. Um, yeah. Rather than go, let me offer you this too. Rather than go and purchase and go buy testing of your strain, how about yeah. if you just buy seeds that are CBD oriented? Have you thought about well, that? Well, I did. I, oh. I, well, that's the thing. I bought my Charlotte's Web seeds, but they say that ah. when you buy them, you have to touch each 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 seed because um, sometimes one of the seeds will have a higher THC count than another one. So it's like a there's a certain percentage of they guarantee. I, I bought mine from a, um, a, a seed company in Canada, and um, they 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 can't promise you that it's just going to be you know 0. 0.007 um, THC in it because you sometimes get a rogue seed that'll uh, it's the same plant, same strand, but not the same plant. So you have to test. You have to just like grow five of them, mark them, grow them out, and then bud them, and then take a, a sample of each one and make sure you keep the clone going. And then once you find out that it's the lowest THC, you know, I don't want any THC in me because I'm a construction worker and I don't want to jeopardize anybody on my job site or myself. So I want, I don't want to be high at all. So I want the lowest count. So I'm willing to spend $70 times five to, to get my mother plant, you know. So I love it. I, that's what I want to do, and like I said, this is a, a this is a CBD strand that I'm growing first. But I have my service web and seeds in the drawer. You know, I'm not going to pull those bad girls out until I <laughs> polished, polished up my skills. You know, fast <laughs> learner, right? Yeah, right. right. So that you know, that's why I want to test them. I, I want 
the lowest. And and for my wife too. She doesn't want to be all ding ding back dingy at her job. She needs to be, you know, on her on her top game at work. So, um, getting highs for after work, you know, just like anything else, just like recreational alcohol, you know, treated as such. That's the kind of way we look at it. So, you know, there you go. Well, it sounds like you got a pretty good plan, and it sounds I like do. you know what I mean. You're pretty close to it too. Yes, I am. Yeah, and, yeah congratulations. And, yeah, and, and before, like when I, when I first started, when I called you and texted you about you know uh, the light thing, I have already researched and, and and went up against that wall, going, man, this is just you know just it just doesn't pan out. I talked to a couple people at different hydro stores, and uh, they were saying, yeah, the LEDs just don't pan out as far as the price and just ridiculous what they're charging and uh, ho- hopefully someday they'll, they'll figure it out and say hey you know we don't have to charge so terribly much for these prices you know for these <laughs> things that don't obviously cost as much to, to build as what they're, what they're uh, oh the high quality built. ones are definitely worth it and I've got growers that yeah. do the kind LEDs a dozen at a time yeah. but yeah. I'm looking forward to it but I mean like right now I just can't yeah. afford it but when well, I start that, push, push, that you know, when you let me know when everything is going great and you've got more than you need from the light that you have, right let on. me know how you're going to change it, right? I mean, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you already own the equipment. And you're going to like, you're going to, it's like the last thing you do when you're good is experiment. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. everything's going good. Why? Now's yeah. the time to change it? Nope. Yeah, right. <laughs> I hear you. you know, but I have always dream of that leather seated Porsche. Oh, hell yeah. When I, I open, I open this door, just. When I open the doors, the song goes, you know, <laughs> someday, someday. You know. So um, I do have other things to talk about, PM knowledge, um, when to know exactly if I'm on week one or two, what my plant needs, it with, you know, what light I'm giving it. I have your cards, which I read every night before I go to bed. I've already read through them about three or four <laughs> times, and and you know I could actually get a couple right. <laughs> and it makes me laugh every time I go. Oh yeah, I remember this one. I remember this one. And I tell my wife, "Yep, got another one. Got another one." So uh, it's a little ritual I do, and uh, she plays her games on her phone, and I uh, flip through the cards. So it's a pretty cool way to end the evening. Um, I don't know how much time we got. I have, I do have a, a question that I don't understand them on your cards. Okay, just sure. save it up, send me an email when you're ready, and let me deal with a couple customers in my store. Hey, Jason, I really appreciate the conversation. It's been great uh, meeting you, and I look forward to another conversation with you. I appreciate the confidence. Thanks so much for your time. All right, buddy. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Okay. That's pretty much how most medical calls go. In this case, it was a little different in that they were already treating themselves. The stigma that surrounds cannabis, and I find that people one generation before me and older, the stigma that surrounds cannabis for them, it's unfortunate because it it, it stops a lot of people from getting help. And because it's been federally illegal for so long, there's been no research. And so you read in the news stories how people end up in the hospital because they consumed cannabis or they did it wrong or you hear the stories. And I've consumed, I've eaten cannabis too. I've eaten the brownies. And I got to tell you, I'm not a big fan of eating it because it's too much. I've tried the Rick, Sim, the Rick Simpson oil and I'm just not a fan of eating cannabis. But then I'm not in it for the pain. Um, as you can probably tell, I got a little hyperactivity ADD going on. And for me, since I've been 13, cannabis has really seemed to be the thing that's slowed me down and allowed me to concentrate. And medical cannabis is a big deal difference than recreational cannabis. And medical cannabis, you've got to be careful because when you consume cannabis, it doesn't break down and it's not metabolized the same way as when you inhale it. See, when you inhale it, it goes through the lungs, into the bloodstream, and then into the brain. But when you eat cannabis, when you eat THC, that gets broken down by the liver. That's why it takes so long for it to come on when you consume cannabis. And that's why you'll leave the party after eating a brownie and you'll go home and 20 minutes later, you're high on the phone calling all your friends. Dude, I'm totally coming on to it. 
It takes 90 minutes because your liver has to break it down and the enzymes have to chew it up and then it gets absorbed into the bloodstream and it passes into the blood brain barrier differently than when you inhale it. See, when you inhale cannabis, you only have so many receptors in your brain that can support the inhalation of it. But when you consume it and your liver breaks it down, then it becomes a central nervous thing in addition to a very cerebral high and while it's not like tripping on acid or eating mushrooms in terms of that kind of psychoactive effect it is very it is a very mental high like i fired everybody at all three hydro stores and tried to burn the house down i was really fucking high off just a little bit you got to be careful. And when it goes through your blood brain barrier by eating it, there is no upper limit. It's closer to alcohol and opiates. The more cannabis you eat, the higher you're going to continue to get. And you can get very high with it. That's why it's suggested that you start off with very low doses and you wait two, two and a half hours. And maybe you try the second time you to take it the next day. Give your body a moment to metabolize it and see what happens. Happens. Because when you smoke it, you only have so many receptors in your head and in your brain, and you can't get higher. And when you consume it, and it affects your central nervous system, it can continue to get you higher and higher. And so there is a big difference between the THC and the CBD and smoking it and eating it. And it's really it's really a new frontier for all of us because without any federal regulation allowing pharmaceuticals to test it, all they've been able to do is shove opiates down our throats. And it's the next scourge of the United States for sure. And people are suing tobacco companies and alcohol companies and gun companies for, for deaths when it was clearly the person's choice to do whatever it was they did and yet they're shooting they're, they're suing these companies and i can't believe that the pharmaceutical companies aren't getting sued because we know the outcome of starting opiates when you start there's no getting off of them and the battle to get off of them it ruins your life it's the scourge of the united states and it should be stopped and regulated like alcohol and tobacco there's no reason for these things except in very limited circumstances. And believe me, I'm a paramedic nurse and I'm a fan of opiates. It's what happens after you leave the hospital when you're on them that always worries me. Same thing with alcohol. You can consume too much cannabis, eat it, liver breaks it down. You get so high, you try to fire everybody, burn your house down. But you don't stop breathing because cannabis, while it may freak you out, doesn't affect the respiratory center of the brain. And that's really one of the other things that happened with the, the opiates that have the death from opiates. And these are the stories that you hear about Narcan and how they're issuing Narcan to police departments. There is no, there is nothing like that for any other drug. So just the fact that we allow people to still consume opiates and we have pain doctors and I understand people are in pain. I'm just saying that if we're willing to give them opiates, then we should be damn well encouraged. We should be pushing the envelope on CBDs and THCs and anything that's this side of an opiate. It's nonsense that this is going on. Okay, I'm the Grow Boss. This has been Cannabis Talk. And if you have any questions, you can always pick up a copy of my Grow Book, the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, eBay, Amazon, or my website, thegrowboss.com. And if you have more questions, you can pick up my No More Grow More cards. There are so many questions about light and yield. These things got everything you need to know about them. Everything you need to know about growing. All right. If you have any questions, you can always call my hotline, thegrowboss.com. When you go shopping online or at your local hydro store, you know, I always suggest always shop local, support your local hydro store. These are the products that you're looking for, right? Great white, Plant Success, The Microbes, Clonex Solution, Clonex Gel, Vortex Fans and Filters, Light Rail, Light Movers. These are the products that are really going to get you more yield for the same light. All right, I'm the Grow Boss. This is the Cannabis Hotline. Thanks for watching.